Um, so anyway, we're going to start today with some more uh, Rhino. And I'll, I'll also lead with telling you that I know that there's kind of a buildup of things. And so what we're going to do is next Monday, we're actually going to take kind of a catch up day. And um, that way you guys can try to get caught up before we move into the night renders. Uh, and we'll start those on Wednesday. So today we're going to talk about bringing lights into your actual scene and working with your scene um, to, to kind of create an interior rendering. We're also going to cover a little bit about getting outside information uh, or outside models and bringing those in to kind of stage your, your building just a little bit. Uh, I will, of course, continue working with this and continue working with my file and demoing as we go forward, but um, we, we want to try to really push forward on this project. Uh, the goal is that within another week or two, you'll have pretty much a complete model for your final project uh, of the semester. At that point, we'll deviate from modeling and rendering and we'll go into how to create high quality line drawings. So the last, uh, let's say two weeks, kind of Thanksgiving on, uh, we're gonna be dealing with high quality line drawings much more than we are with rendering. So we wanna get the much as much as we can done. And I found that giving you guys a, a working catch-up day is always a good idea. So that's coming on Monday. I'll probably talk for a little bit in the live lecture, but it won't be nearly as long or as much demo as um, there is typically. And the idea being that you take your extra time and you get time to work on your model. So let me go ahead and share my screen here so we can get started for today. Uh, Quinlan, looks like you have a, a question. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just wondering what, what classes you're uh, going to be teaching next semester. Ah, so the old, what am I teaching next semester? So actually, and this hasn't really been widely distributed, but you guys can know because you asked the question, I'm actually not going to teach anything next semester. I'm taking the semester off. So I will be uh, out of commission in, in, any, in any classes. So you've got no options. I... Uh, I got a bunch of things going on outside of DVC that need my attention. So um, that's what the spring will be like for me. So unfortunately, uh, I won't be taking, teaching anything. So I've got no options for you. All right. So let's uh, let's take a look here at what we've got here in uh, our Rhino. I haven't I've yet to open anything yet. So we're starting fresh today. And when we start talking about lights and light fixtures, we really have two options for how we control it. And we can bring our light fixtures. So imagine for the moment we talk about that can light that we created yesterday that or on Monday, that four inch can light. We want to bring that into the scene. Obviously, it's a block reference, so we can bring it in. Now we can bring that block reference into our uh, building file and then pass it along with the building file into the site file. Or we could take that light fixture and bring it directly into the site file as a separate block. For me personally, I favor bringing it directly into the site file rather than bringing it into your building and then bringing it into the site file. So if Rhino would ever open for me, I'm going to open up the site file, I hope. There we go. Perfect. So let's close up my V-Ray tools here. We'll keep just the main toolbar open. Like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and open that master site file. So let me go to file and then open. And I'm going to go into my uh, OneDrive here. And so remember, I'm in my, my folder here, and I had a master site that was the Lake Tahoe, and I had a master site that was the ocean. I'm just going to go ahead and open up the master site that was Lake Tahoe, or excuse me, the ocean. So when I click, doesn't really matter. And we'll go ahead and we'll load that one up. Now, one of the, the strategies so that you don't run into these little delays when you're opening things, you can choose in your OneDrive, and this is just in the folder itself, to when you first log into the computer, and you go to your folder that contains all of your files and all of your reference files, um, you can actually take it, right click on it and say, always keep on this device. And it will actually download all of the files locally, which will make things load a little bit faster. So I actually recommend doing that. 
um, as, as a way of making sure all your files are, are ready locally. And there's the file that I was working on um, two classes ago before we started working on light fixtures. So we have the sun already installed. And today our, our kind of goal would be to set up some renderings of the interior. I'd like at least one rendering of the interior. Uh, and so when we start to set that up, a couple things that are important. One, if I were to take this and just drop directly into the building. So if I zoom in here a little bit, you can see that it's hard to really get a good view of the whole building. Right? We seem kind of zoomed in and it's it's choppy like that. So what's with nothing selected, we can actually change the lens length on the camera. So if I have nothing selected and I go to properties, you'll see over here on the right side that the lens length is set at 50 millimeters. I can change that for an interior to be at about 18 millimeters. And you'll see that when I do that, I suddenly get a much wider field of view. And if you watch the like HGTV TV shows and stuff, a lot of what they show inside a building, it's always with a wide angle lens. So we're seeing a lot more of our building. So as I start to zoom around in the building here, I may find that there's a particular view that I like. So let's say it's this view right there uh, where I'm kind of looking out the windows and I say, you know what, this is a pretty good looking view. I'm happy with this view. Let's go ahead and save that as a rendered view. I'll go to set view named views, and I'm going to call this one, let me click on save here, render two, or I could say interior render zero one. I'll go ahead and say okay. And the advantage there is that I can always come back to it. So if I switched outside, if I went to set view render one, we jump over into my render one view, and then I could go back to set view and I could go to interior render one, and that gives me that view. And as I start to create more views, so if I spun around, for example, and I wanted to look back at my stairs, maybe, oops. Come on, get me inside. Something like that. I can set up my view for this, for this view, then I could save that one as well. I can save it as interior render two, for example. And so it's always a good idea to start to set these up so that when you do your renders, you can go back to the same view and render it. Sometimes people like more control over their renderings. And if you want more control over where the camera is specifically, we can click this little down arrow and go to set camera and then show camera. And nothing shows up in this view, but if we switch to one of the other views, Let's look at the top view, for example. We can see the camera and we can control where the camera is located. So it's right there. It's actually inside the wall. So this render wouldn't turn out particularly well, but I can manipulate it by selecting it and moving it. And you see that as I manipulate it and move it, now it's in that corner of the, the, the building there, I can control where it is. Furthermore, I can control the height. So if I looked at the front view here, we could say, you know what, that camera is really pretty low. Let's go ahead and move it vertically so that it's up more at eye level. And then when we're looking at it, there's that view reflected here at a little bit more eye level. Now there's a little bit of clipping that's happening here where it's showing the outside. That's not really gonna happen in the final rendered view. So don't worry about that. It'll, it'll show up just as a wall. And I can go ahead and I can save this view as well. So let's go to set view, name views. And this would be my, click on save, interior render two, zero two. We'll go ahead and say, okay. And again, all of these can be updated and changed as we go along. So that's how you would manipulate the camera in the other views of this view. So when I'm done, I'll click the down arrow, I'll go to set camera and I'll uncheck show camera and the camera goes away. So now it's time to start thinking about bringing those light fixtures in. It actually looks like maybe I already brought them into this file by mistake. So I'm gonna go back and delete them out of that file and bring them in uh, here. So let me go back to my OneDrive. And that's my mistake here. Let's go uh, into today's folder. I'm gonna start with my retreat file here.
And let's go ahead and close these up. There we go. And in this view, I want to, and let me go ahead and switch it into ghosted mode so we can kind of see it. Actually, it might be even better in wireframe mode. Let's go to wireframe. And are these blocks? Oh, actually, they're just circles. They're not blocks. They're just little circles that are left over. Um, oh, no, they are saying they're block instances. Let me, uh, SEL block instance. So I can select all of those. So that was a, sorry, I should have pointed that out. SEL followed by what you're trying to select frequently will let you select things by name rather than going through and clicking them. So what I did is I typed SEL block instance and I'm selecting all of those lights that were blocks. Again, they're not turning out right. So we're gonna go ahead and delete them. Uh, I'll type DEL or press the delete key on my keyboard and then we'll save this file. So I'll go to file and then save. And then when I jump back over into this file, I can go to edit blocks, block manager. And we're gonna update it and I'll go ahead and click on update. There we go. Now, theoretically that's gonna update. Perfect. So I've gone ahead and I've updated it. Now I can start to bring in those lights. So we already had that light uh, that we created last class. It was the can light. That's the one I'm going to bring in. I'm going to go to edit blocks, insert block instance. And I'm going to browse for that light. And I think I ended up saving it in the exercise folder which was in, what was it, 220. And so it was this CL4. In the interest of being clean, however, I'm actually gonna move the CL4 light into the folder that I have here for the artist's retreat. So let's jump back into my um, demonstrations here. I'm gonna take the CL4 light and since I'm here, I'm going to take the floor lamp as well. I hope. And I'm going to right click and say copy. And then we'll jump back into my base folder here. There it is. And I'm going to pick the fall 2022 folder. And I'm going to go ahead and give my uh, self a new folder here for blocks just for some organization. And then we'll go ahead and paste those in here. That keeps them organized. Now we can jump back into my retreat folder here. There's my blocks and there's my CL4. And let's go ahead and import that in. So this is going to be linked as a reference. We'll go ahead and say, okay. Then we'll say, okay, here. And I'm going to find a spot to snap it to. And so I'll turn on my end snap or I could turn on, for example, my midpoint snap. And I wanna snap it to the ceiling. I wanna snap it to right there. So it's on the ceiling, so that's good. But I really need to organize it so it's not on the wall. So I'll use the top view. Let me close the views there. And then we'll move that file. So I'll type move. And maybe we'll move it out by 18 inches. Oh, that moved way more than I wanted to. Let's move. And uh, let's go here. There we go. And so there's my first light. Now I could copy this and we could move it in this direction. Let me turn on ortho so that they're staying straight here. We could copy it over by maybe four feet in that direction. And then we could go back four feet in this direction. And now I'm creating that first set of lights here. Then maybe I want to continue down this wall. So let's copy this. And we'll go four feet. And then maybe eight feet. About like that. And so maybe that's how I want the lights. Maybe it's not. We can always move those around and, and kind of tweak them a little bit later on. Maybe I want it centered, but you get the idea. 
So once I've inserted those into the scene, we should be able to see them in this view. So there's my little light fixtures. Now, as we talked about last class, that's the fixture. That's the geometry that holds the light. But we also need to insert the V-Ray spotlight that represents the light in our scene. So I'm going to go up to the V-Ray spotlight tool here. And I, again, find this a little bit easier to start to create using my other views. I'm going to go ahead and snap to the center of my shape. There it is. Snap to the center. My uh, radius is one foot. And my height, and again, I'm going to do this in the front view, is also one foot. And there it is, pointing straight up and down. Now, as was before, this light can't be inside the wall, so I have to move it down. So let me type in move. And I'm going to drop it down so that it's below the light fixture there. Let me go to move, and we'll actually bring it back up so it's a little bit closer, right like that. So we do have to edit the properties of this light. And notice I'm doing it on one light, and then I'm actually going to test render it before I copy the light and use it multiple times. So let's change the color first. Her color was 255, 214, and 170. There we go. We'll say OK. We're going to go into my V-Ray tools, which are not currently active. So let's go into my um, current render. Let's change it to V-Ray for Rhino. And let's open up my V-Ray tools. And there's that spotlight. I'd like to make some changes to it. So we'll look over here. We're going to change my units into radiant power or watts. And then we're going to change my intensity. I'm going to leave that at about 40 watts. And my decay is also set to inverse square. So all of those settings are good. Then I'll come back to this interior render two here, and we'll do a render and see if it's turning out. So let me go ahead and click on the little teapot, and let's do a test render. And unfortunately, when I do these live, we just have to wait for the renders. So the settings are already pretty good. And when we do the test render, we're seeing the lights, so that's good. And we're seeing that cone shining on the wall. So the settings there are good. So at this point, I can actually take this spotlight and I can copy it to the other lights. So let me go ahead and type copy. And what I'll do is it actually might be easier to do this in the uh, top view. I'm going to use quadrant to snap. And I'm going to snap to the light fixture. And then I'll just copy it over to the rest of the light fixtures. So we'll do it right there. And we'll come over to this one and copy it to right there. And we'll go down to this one and copy it to right there. And we'll go down to this one and copy it right there. So I've just created copies of all those light fixtures. I can confirm that my settings look good. Yep, they all look good. And now I have all of those spotlights in the scene. So I'm ready to start that rendering. So once again, I could come back to my set view render two, and I could click on the teapot, and we could start a render. And now we're going to see light being cast for each of those cam lights in the ceiling. So that looks pretty good. So I would continue. And so in this scenario, I have them on my lower floor, but I might want the same lights on the upper floor. And the advantage is now that I've created them once, we could actually jump back here. Let me go to my ghosted mode. And I'm going to zoom select it on my building. There you go. We can kind of see them here. What I'll do is I'll select, I'm going to hold down shift, all of the light fixtures and their V-Ray accompanying lights, like that. And then I could copy them from the lower floor right there up to the upper floor right here. And so the advantage, of course, is that in my scenario, I have two floors that are identical on top of each other. But I could also use those same lights over in the other part of my building. So I could copy them again from right here 
and we could drop them into this back part, right? Oops, come on, snap, right there. Now I don't know for sure in that scenario that, yeah, looks like that light was off a little bit. So I would either need to move it or I need to select this last light and just get rid of it. And then maybe I need to do a little bit of tweaking. Maybe this needs to move over. More like that. And maybe this light needs to move down. Oops, that was selecting more than I wanted to. Maybe that needs to move down. And maybe this light just goes away, or maybe that moves down as well. So that ends up more in the center. And then maybe I want to take those two and I want to copy them. And so you can see how it's, it ends up being fairly easy to go through and create a bunch of lights for inside your, your particular scene. So there they are kind of spread out across the scene. And now when I went to render, so let's come back to my set view render two, we should get some more light back up in there. So I could go ahead and click on the teapot and we could see what that looks like. So right now that was a little bit dark and now we're starting to see some lights. My stairwell still seems a little bit dark for me. So I'd like to, to add some lights to the stairwell, but you can see how I'm starting to build this up a bit. Let me go ahead and close that. So, so those are all of those lights. I probably should have organized them a little bit better because I don't have them currently on their own layer. So let's go, go ahead over here and let's um, create a new layer. I'm going to call this lighting. And we'll add a CL4 dash spots. And I'm going to use that SEL light to select all of the lights. Unfortunately, it did select the sun and control, of course, won't work through Zoom. So I'm going to have to do it manually. So I'll select all of the spotlights here. Let's take those two. And again, I should have done this before I started. That was my mistake. Darn it. All right, so those are selected. Those are selected. Those are selected. All right, let's go ahead and move those over onto the CL4 layer, change object layer. And then I'll come back and do this for these. And again, this is just about organization so that you could turn those lights on and off at a later time. So I could take all of those. And in this scenario, I'm putting both the block and the light fixture on the same layer. I could sub, do sub layers to, to organize them just a little bit more, but now those are all on their own layers. So I could turn them all off or I could turn them all on, which is a, a nice advantage uh, as you're starting to do the renderings. So those are all of my spotlights. Now I may want to install other things like the uh, floor lamp and or some furniture. So if I wanted to do some furniture, I'm not asking you guys to actually create furniture from scratch. You can actually find them online and I'm okay with you using it as a block reference. So let's go ahead and uh, the website that I like is flyingarchitecture.com. And we can go ahead and open that up. And they have a bunch of uh, models that you can download. If you click on their store here, I'm not asking you to uh, pay for anything, but you can see here they have, there's a dining room table set, there's a chair. Um, and you can actually, if you open up the 3D models, you can then toggle a little toggle here for only the free models. And you can use these. Obviously you can't use one of their light fixtures as your own. Um, if you're trying to turn it in for assignment 204, but you can use a lot of the other things that they've created and are giving away for free, which is really, really nice of them and uh, great for our purposes. So let's say that we like this chair, this, um, if I click on it, uh, I can click on download 
and we'll go ahead and download that file. Maybe. Come on. Oh, there it is. And then before I ever bring in one of these files, I always like to open it up and take a look at it. So first off, let's right click and say extract all. And there we go. Uh, go ahead and skip that. What? Maybe I had an issue when it was downloading. The downloads here. Let's try this one, right click, extract all. Huh. So, and this is again, one of those times where we might have some problems. I don't know whether, yeah, it's empty. So it's obviously something went wrong with that file. Maybe it's the wrong uh, browser. Maybe I should have used Chrome. I don't, I don't know. Um, I do have some that I've already downloaded before. Here, let's try Firefox since I can get to it. architecture.com. Oops. I can't type either. And now my whole computer froze. Okay, come on. Flyingarchitecture.com. There we go. Store. Only free. Try it again. And we'll see. While that's attempting, I'm going to go back and see if I can download something else. They do have some, um, you know, subcategories. So we could go into furniture. We could go into sofas and armchairs. Go ahead and save this file. Okay. So it looks like it did actually uh, download this time. So it was a browser issue or, or something that I did wrong. Let me take, well, maybe not. We're having issues. All right, let's go back here. Again, only free. And then we can look at uh, one of those. So let's say we like this couch right there. We could try to download that one. And let's see if it'll let me. Okay, so let's see, come on. My nose is killing me. It is about to make me do it on, on the Mac and then <laughs> copy it over onto this computer. Uh, anyway, in the interest, oh, come on. So nice. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it's all not having a good time. Okay, so I came back here. Uh, I would love to open one of these files, but of course they appear. Let's see if I can get it now. Oh, good, I can copy it. So let me go ahead and copy it. I'm copying the file, but notice that there's also a bunch of information for the fabrics and the woods of it. So I can use those to make the appropriate materials. So let's go ahead and go into my OneDrive folder and let's go into my retreat folder and into my blocks folder. And then we'll go ahead and paste all of that information in. So I'll go to paste. Oh, maybe it's a OneDrive issue. Hmm. I'm not sure what's going on. Well, let's let's see if we can save to it. So let me go ahead and just open it. We're going to do a save as anyway.
All right. So it's missing some uh, image files. So we can go to replace those image files. And of course, they're not there. So we'll have to do some manual adjustments here. Let's go ahead and close that. So there is our couch. We're confirming that we like it. Let's move this. OK, then let's do a Save As. So I'll go to File and then Save As. And we'll see if it'll let me save it onto my uh, OneDrive or whether I'm still having issues with OneDrive. Let's go to my folder. Let's go to Blocks. And we're just going to call this Couch. There we go. Let's click Save. Feeling like I'm having OneDrive problems. Okay, it, it did it. So then we need to, to double check our organization here. Uh, it looks like we have something default and we have the couch. Okay, the couch is all on that layer. Let's make that active. Let's clean it up by deleting the default layer. There we go. And then we need to apply some materials to this object. So let's go ahead and let's switch over into shaded mode for a second so we can see it a little bit better. I'm going to change the color so we can see the surfaces. Oh, they're very dense. Okay. Well, that's not going to help us too much right now. So we'll go ahead and uh, apply some materials to it. So let's go up to my V-Ray. Let's look for some materials. Let's go into fabric. We don't want carpet. But let's use, how about this gray? We'll right click on it and say, add to scene. There it is. And then we'll go ahead and apply to all of these objects, that material. There we go. We'll right click on the fabric and say, apply to selection. And then they have the metal legs. So we need to select all of those. So we'll go into metal. Let's do the anodized dark gray. Let's go add to scene. And then we need to select all of the metal. So let's see if we can. Right, so we, this is where it would be nice to have these on separate layers. So maybe I will create a sub layer for fabric. And then we can right click and say change object layer. And then we can turn those off. And that makes selecting everything else that much easier. Uh, I think all of these should probably be part of the fabric layer. I think they're little bits of trim. So let's go ahead and take all of those to put them on the fabric layer as well. And then the rest of this would be the metal. So let's do metal. And we'll take all of those objects. We'll go back into V-Ray. And we could actually assign this by layer now. So I could right click and say, apply to layer. And let's go to the metal layer. Perfect. We could turn those back off. We could turn on the fabric. Oh, wait. Those weren't put on the metal layer. There we go. You right click and put those on the metal layer, change object layer. Excellent. Then we could turn back on the fabric. And instead of Let's make sure that the fabric is applied by layer instead. Fabric. And let's make sure that these objects are all under materials being applied by layer. Come on. We want to use layer material. Perfect. So all of that's now set. We can save it. I'll go to file and then save. And again, it's always worth going and opening the file, making sure the materials and everything are working correctly. And then once it's saved, we can bring this in to the scene. And in this case, because it's not a light, you could bring it into the retreat directly, or you could again, bring it into the final um, site file. It's up to you. So let's go ahead and drop that one in. 
I'm going to switch to my final site file. There it is. I want to drop it here on the end. I'm going to go to file or excuse me, edit blocks, insert block instance. There we go. And we're going to browse for that couch. And then we'll go ahead and say, okay. We'll say, okay. Now it's time to bring that one in. And again, I want to snap to something so that I know where it where it's going. Snap to right there. Now we need to do some orientation. You could use the gumball if you wanted here, or you could just rotate it. Let's just do it here. Let me turn on. Let's orient it like that. Let's move it so that it's fully inside of my scene here. And I'm not sure that it's sitting correctly on the wall. So we'll come over here and make sure that it's sitting correctly. Yeah, that looks like it's sitting correctly. Perfect. And so now that I have that, uh, was my, the metal legs were turned off. There we go. And now that I have that in my scene, right, that part's ready to render. And I'm kind of staging this, right? I'm adding just a little bit of furniture to kind of enhance the scene. But now I could also add that uh, floor lamp next to it. So we can go to edit blocks, block manager, or excuse me, insert block instance. We can browse for my floor lamp. Say open, linked as a reference file. We'll say okay. We'll say okay. And then I can drop that floor lamp in like that, and then we can move it. So that's over and we can move it so that it shows up right like that. And now I have that floor lamp. Obviously I have to put the point light in for that. We did that before. So let's go into lighting. Let's add a layer. This would be floor lamp. We then create a point light. That was the sun, sorry, wrong button. This one is the point light. And just like we did before, whoops, we want that to snap into our scene. Let's go ahead and zoom selected so we can see it. Obviously that's really high. We need it to, to show up down. So let's make the front view active. And we'll go ahead and move. And we'll drop that down so that it's inside of the light. And we can move it over just a little bit, move it down a little bit more like that. I'm going to double check it in the uh, side view. So zoom selected just to make sure that it's actually inside the lamp. See, it was outside the lamp. So let's move it over in this side view. There it is. So now we again need to edit the properties of that light. So we'll go in here, we'll go to our lights. There it is, there's the Omni light. We need to edit the color here. Um, so this was on a scale of 255, this was 255, 214 and 170, like that. There's our color. We're gonna change our power into radiant power watts. We'll change our power at 40 watts and our decay is set for inverse square. So all of that looks good for that particular light. So we can double click to get back into our interior render. We can click this down arrow and go to set view, interior render two. And there's my view. Now I have a couch. Now I have a light in here and we can do another test render. So I'll click on the little teapot and we'll give it a, we'll give it a go. So you can see that now as this is starting to grow. And again, these are really small renders because I'm just trying to get a, a, you know approximates of, of what's looking. So I'm not spending a lot of time doing the render. Yep, the couch has showed up, that's good. Our light fixture has shown up. Um, so everything's looking pretty good. These stairs still seem pretty uh, unlit. So this is where maybe I'd add some more supplemental lighting. So this might be an opportunity to use a rectangular light and light underneath each stair. 
So if I went in and created a rectangular light, oops, I need to change my view a little bit. Let's zoom select it on that light bulb here. Um, Around this. Zoom selected. All right, so I want to zoom in on that stair just a little bit. There it is. And then I could use my rectangle light tool. And underneath here, I'm going to snap to the front edge of my light. Oops, helps if I actually snap to it. Maybe I'll do it at this one. It'll be a little bit easier, and then I can copy it. And that then is a little rectangular light that's under the stair. Remember, it can't be coplanar co with the surface. So I have to move it down just a little bit. So we could go into one of the side views to see it a little bit better. There it is. And we could type move and we could drop it just a little bit below the step. So maybe about like that. And then we'll need to edit the settings of that light. So we'll go into V-Ray. There it is, it's the rectangle light. We'll change our color, 255, 214, and 170. There we go. So our color's now set. Our radiant power. And now this is the tricky one. So the rectangular light spreads the wattage over the size of the light. So if you have really huge rectangular lights, you have to increase the intensity to get more light out of them. If you have really small lights, you have to decrease the intensity. So it's a it's really a experimentation that's necessary. So I'm going to experiment and I'm going to set this one uh, at about 25 and we'll see what happens. So it's more dim. Let's look at our options. I'm going to check the box for invisible because I don't want to see the light. I just want it to be casting light. And I don't need it to be double sided because we don't need to shine light back up at the stair. So those options are now set. Let's go back to my interior render view here. And let's do a test render and see if that light is sh shining correctly. So you can see as this starts to, to materialize here, we are getting a little bit of shine on the bottom of that stair. Maybe it needs to be a little bit stronger. So we go back, and again, I'm doing this before I create lots of these lights. I go back into my V-Ray settings. And on that rectangle light, I'd go ahead and say, let's increase the radiant power up to maybe, mm, let's try 40. And I think that one's probably going to be okay, but it's always worth doing a test render one more time just to confirm, because you don't want it to be too bright and then have to go in and select them all. So that seems like it's, it's pretty good. It's illuminating the step the way I want it to. So... Let's go ahead and take that and put it on its own layer. So I'm going to call this stair light. Like that. I'm going to make it active. And then we're going to copy this onto each stair. So I'll copy from this stair. And then we're going to start copying it so that it's on every one of the stairs. Now it's on all of those stairs. And then if we went to render, we could take a look at what it looks like with those lights on all the stairs. And so you can start to see that we've created, you know, stair lighting in this scenario. Is the one if you didn't like the... the stair lighting, we could do up lighting. Yeah, go ahead. Is the one next to the stairs supposed to be window? This side is a window, and the other this side, side is the wall. Ah, this is a concrete okay. wall. It's look like window in the uh, 3D. Uh, uh... Yeah, so so here at so the it's lower like a level, window. at the lower level, let me look at it from the back here. This is a, a concrete wall because of the slope. I couldn't carry the windows all the way down. As you get higher, it becomes a window. Oh, okay. Thanks. So that I had it set up as a concrete wall, uh, like a kind of an exposed concrete wall. But again, that's a style choice. So as I start to develop, and you guys are probably seeing this come together now, if I go back to my interior render two, 
you know, I'm adding these lights, I'm adding these lights, I'm adding a little bit of staging, a little bit of furniture, and I'm starting to see how does this look and, and do I feel like it's looking good? If I feel like it's looking good, it's time to perform a render at a little bit higher quality. I'm gonna save my piece here. So we'll go to file and then save. And then I go back into my uh, render settings once it's done with the save. There we go. I go into my settings and I go into my render output. You can see that I'm down much lower. I can bump this up kind of to a minim minimum of about 1080. And this also brings the fact that rendering at higher quality starts to take more time. And that's, that's just the fact of how it works. So a couple of things that we can do to help ourselves out. First off, we can choose under save image to automatically save the image. It'll ask where to save it to. And we can say, I want it on my OneDrive. And let me go into my folder. And I might create a new folder for renders. And then I can say open. And then I'll go ahead and, and save it. Now, some of you ran into this problem with the skyscraper. If you're saving it as a PNG file, it's not going to preserve the sky in the background. You want to save it instead as a JPEG file. Okay. And then I'm going to call this master site uh, render. And we'll go ahead and click on save. So what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to save the file automatically when the render is done, just in case something were to happen. There are some other options here that you can choose to save if you wanted to. Uh, we're going to ignore those options for right now. That's the auto save. Now, the next piece that you can choose to turn on, it may or may not help depending on the resources that are available to the computer at the lab, is this option called Swarm. And this borrows computing power from other computers on the network. So we can go ahead and turn that on. There's no harm in turning it on, but it may or may not help. And it allows basically other computers that are that are on the network to, to do some rendering. Uh, under network discovery here, we want to make sure that it's set to auto discovery. That allows us to find other computers that are on the network that can help our render. So I've done those two things to kind of help things out. The last piece of the puzzle is that sometimes rendering takes longer than you have and your computer times out. And rather than make you sit there and continue to move the mouse to keep it going, I'm going to tell you a secret that you have to promise not to tell anybody about uh, because the IT people wouldn't be very happy if I was telling you this, okay? So this is a separate little program that you can find on, uh, I have a link to it on the, uh, the course website. It's a program that's called Caffeine. So if you do a Google search for Caffeine app, let me close this here. Uh, it's this made by Zorn Software. And what it does is it allows you to keep the computer active without logging you out. So we'll click on download. And there's the little caffeine zip file. You can save it on your flash drive. That's what you want to do. I'm not going to do it because I already have it on my flash drive. And once it's there on your flash drive, or excuse me, not on your flash drive, on your OneDrive, I have it in a folder here. There it is. You're going to go ahead and launch the caffeine 64. When you do that, you'll get a little teapot thing in the lower corner. See, it looks like a coffee pot. And once that's active, you can actually right click on it and say, leave it active for eight hours. And it will, every once, every minute, it'll press the F15 key, which doesn't do anything. Uh, and it'll keep your window active while you're doing the renderings. So it's meant to help you out, but that's just during renderings because obviously it's going to keep the computer active and not let somebody else uh, log into it. So it kind of works around the system. But when we do these renders, we need longer times to do the renders. So I have caffeine active. Now that I have caffeine active, I've set my image width and height correct. I've set my autosave. I'm going to go ahead and click on the render with V-Ray icon here, the teapot, and we'll op open that up. And we should start very soon to get a much higher quality render. And there it is. So we'll give it some time to, to work through its render. And then, like I said, it will auto save the end result for us. 
So I like to bring that just to your attention so that you know it's coming. Uh, I'm seeing right now that I have a material that wasn't applied correctly outside. So I still have issues. So it's probably a little bit premature to jump to the, uh, the, you know, the finished product. But at the same time, I wanted to at least, um, you know, make you aware of this going forward. Okay. So I've been having power trouble today. So I think my power just went out. So I'm working on battery power right now. Uh, so I'm going to finish the lecture just in case I disappear, but you guys should be good to start. Um, I'm seeing Luis, you had a question. It may be late to ask this, but what's the difference between a regular layer and a sub layer? Ah, so a regular layer and a sub layer um, is just an organizational strategy. So the regular layer here in my lighting controls all the lights. So I could turn all the lights off here. The sub layers control each of the individual sets of light. And we could take it even further and have sub sub layers. It's just a way of kind of organizing your files with the hundreds and hundreds of objects or maybe thousands of objects that you have. All right, so I'll let you guys all go. Um, it is 12.11. Let's come back at like 12.25 for our check-ins today. And hopefully my power will be back on and we'll be good to go.